Friends, as uh, we look at Parshat Ekev a little, little more deeply, we see that it's a, a, a section that continuing this narrative where Moses is recounting the past as we also look forward to the future, right? He's going back and and walking the Israelites through some of the steps of their journey, uh, not all, not always the good ones, uh, sometimes also their failings, so that they can be properly prepared for when they ultimately cross over the Jordan and make their way into the land of Canaan. In the middle of our Parsha, we have a highlight, but really what I mean by that is a low light of that journey, which is a recounting of the golden calf incident, and specifically also then the reaction that Moshe, that Moses has when he, he comes down from the mountain with the two tablets and sees what's going on in the camp. And as you might recall, uh, when Moses sees this, he takes the tablets and he smashes them. Right, so he this this uh, this is recounted here in our parasha, where it says, "I gripped the two tablets, I flung them away with both my hands, I smashed them before your eyes," and uh, it's a pretty dramatic moment for the people in their relationship with God. And even now, as it's told after the fact, sort of looking back on that moment, uh, it still is jarring to think about Moses taking these tablets that God fashion for him saying this is the path that I need the people to be on these are the words to follow and just and destroying God's words right it's a it is a profound moment and then the the word shattering of the tablets also really speaks to perhaps the shattering of the entire Israelite psyche in that moment the our sages really they do wonder what prompted Moses to do this right because there are a few things we could consider here as possibilities, right? He could have just been angry and frustrated at the people being insubordinate. Um, maybe he's trying to, in some, a different way, protect the people by, if he removes God's words, essentially, then they don't realize they're sinning, right? Because, oh, well, they never knew it. So therefore, he's essentially trying to through a loophole, protect them in a sense from God's word. Um, and maybe it's to awaken, maybe it's a dramatic theatrical act to awaken the people to repentance. There's a number of different possibilities that are, uh, you know, that are framed by our commentators throughout the, the generations about this particular instance. Uh, but what's also interesting for us to think about is how God responds to this moment, right? After Moses shatters the tablets, right? So, for one thing, it's uh, once the tablets are shattered and we can see that God at least creates a pathway for the Israelites to uh, return. Yes, there's a plague. Yes, people die. It's true. But the people as a whole are allowed to continue, whereas initially the thought might might have been that God was going to wipe out the entire people. Right. That was that that was put forth. Uh, and just spare Moses and essentially start the whole project again. Instead, God holds some of them accountable, but at the same time gives a path forward for repentance for the people to continue. And how do we know that? Because God says, carve out two new tablets, like the first, right? God says, we're going we're gonna to have a do-over here, um, and I'm going to inscribe on those two tablets the commandments that I did on the, just like the first that you smashed, and you're going to put them in the ark. But there's another interest. So, so the reunion between God and Israel, we can we can seem to anticipate that that's going to happen. Um, and uh, yes, there may be bumps on the road, but at the same time, we see that God seems to be willing to accept Israel back. But there's another question, which is, what does God think of Moses in this moment for what he's done? Is this a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Right. And so there's a, a midrash from the Talmud from uh, the Tractate Shabbat. That says, how do we know that God approved of what Moses did in that moment? There's a so the, this uh, the words Asher Shibarta that you broke. Those are the Hebrew words. So the Talmudic Rabbi Reish Lakish says, Ah, well, that sounds kind of like Yasher Koach. Now, just hear the alliter alliteration: Asher and Yasher. They're different words. Make no doubt about, you know, make no mistake. They are different words. Asher and Yasher, different roots, but the alliteration is there. And thus, Rachel Laki says, aha, well, if it says Asher Shibarta, really what God is saying is Yasher Koach, that you smashed the tablets when you did, 
right? It's that he, that Reisaki says that God is behind, fully behind Moses' decision to take that traumatic act uh, to, and uh, in that moment, sh literally shatter God's word in front of the people. So uh, the, 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 another question that remains for us to think about then is, okay, we see the Israelites might have a path back. We see God seem, at least according to the rabbis, God feels pretty good about what Moses did, his choice of how to handle the situation. What do we do with the broken tablets? What do we do with the broken tablets? Because do we just throw them away? I mean, say that, you know, God forbid, right? That, like, that, not that that was entertained necessarily, right? But, but it, the question, while it sounds silly, is a real one. What are they supposed to do with these shattered remnants of God's word to the people, right? So the Talmud jumps into this and, and says, well, basically, well, actually, excuse me, before the Talmud jumps into it, the, in our parsha here in Ekev, we're told that, by, that God says, I will inscribe on the new tablets, the commandments that were on the first tablets, and you shall deposit them, very ambiguous uh, construct there, in the ark. The, uh, the ambiguity is, does it mean the new tablets that God just is now fashioning to replace the old ones? Does it mean the old tablets that were smashed? Or does it mean both? Right? So the Talmud weighs in and says, how do we know? that they, we, they tip their hand early. How do we know that, in fact, the fragments of the first tablets were deposited in the ark, right? So that's their, their, their feeling, the Talmudic rabbis, is it's got to be both in there. Well, so we've got a teacher, Rabbi Yosef, who says that when, when it says, Asher Shibarta Vesam Tam, and they're, they're, when the words are so closely juxtaposed in this verse here in Deuteronomy 10, it says that Basically, the shattered pieces and the placing have to be connected. The, the words are so close together. Therefore, it suggests that from a physical standpoint, it means that they are supposed to be close together, both the new and the old, and both placed into the Ark of the Covenant, right? So both are deposited there for, sa for safekeeping. So the big picture from this episode in the Parsha and the accompanying teachings in the Talmud and the Midrash You've got this new generation of Israelites. They're prepared, prepared, preparing, really, to enter the land of Israel together with a fresh start in their relationship with God. And yet, in the midst of all that, they still need to carry the old broken tablets that remind them of what went wrong before. Together with, but not just the old broken tablets, together with the promise held by the newly fashioned tablets that show that they could start fresh and have another chance at getting the relationship right. Now, I think this teaching also seems quite apropos for our liminal moment now, feeling sort of between two worlds of looking at these past few months and looking at the months ahead. And amongst the many lessons we've learned from the COVID-19 pandemic, most of them painful, we've also learned some valuable ones about the nature of our relationships. I think many of us have noticed that before COVID forced us to hunker down in our homes, too often we may have focused too much on work and achievement, and as a result, undervalued and underprioritized, spending precious time with those closest to us, our family, our friends, our community. When we've gotten the chance to spend more quality time with our immediate families and simultaneously become deprived of the in-person connection to extended family, to our friends, to our community, right, something which we can feel like even this morning, our first Shabbat gathered, yes, not in person, but being able to see each other face-to-face -face, uh, in, in, in a, at least that connective way, right, we've likely realized how much that these relationships added and continue to add joy and meaning to our lives. As a result, many of us have increased our investment of time and energy into those relationships while still at physical distance by connecting via Zoom or FaceTime, even with folks with whom we may have fallen out of touch for a long while. Some examples that occurred to me from my own experiences over the last several months and from lots of other stories that people have shared with me, right? Reunions with camp friends, youth group friends, college friends, 
distant relatives, et cetera, right? The world has definitely gotten smaller over these last five months and in many ways more closely intertwined in relationship. But as our Torah portion and accompanying Midrashim point out, it would be easy enough to move forward with this new relational reality and just forget about where we had been and the choices we had been making before. It's always easier to relegate to the past the times when our priorities were skewed and potentially flawed. And yet, the teaching from the Talmud reminds us that side by side with our new vision of the powerful, life-affirming and sustaining potential of our relationships, it's important for us to also carry with us in our personal arcs the memory of when things were broken down to some degree and the price we paid for that in relational terms. Carrying both together, our shattered tablets, along with the complete whole, we are also always reminded that while we may bear scars or some lasting impacts from what have come before, relationships can be repaired and developed, and we can effectively start over just as the Israelites started over with God. The Talmudic sage Reish Lakish, that same rabbi who viewed God as approving of Moses' choice to smash the tablets, also commented, Pa'amim shebitula shel Torah zehu yisoda. There are times when the nullification of Torah may be its foundation. Sometimes the shattering of our realities in our moment in time, not by our design, and certainly not by our wishes, but at the hand of a devastating pandemic, can help reset our foundation to new selves, new relationships, new strong and firm groundings upon which we may stand going forward. As we gradually emerge into our new beginnings and reprioritized lives, maybe Reish Lakish and even God might say to us, Yashar Koach Shashibarta, well done that you smashed. As long as you remember to pick up those broken pieces and carry them with you as well. Shabbat Shalom.